Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about this, which is a tank that I made for the DLAC. Uh, so you can see here the Memblab A1 Mini has uh, some extra waste filament or poop plastic filament that kind of gets dropped down. And not many enclosures really have a good solution for this. So that was something I was working on here for the DLAC skirt adapter that is going to be compatible with the A1 Mini here soon. So that was something I've been working on this week. So I wanted to kind of go through it. And you can see here I have these little cutouts evenly spaced cutouts here and then i'll show here fully remove the whole thing and then i have this little god in the middle can't really see it there but once i show you the design process i'll show you kind of how i came up with that idea and overall i think it's working pretty good you can see that pretty much all the plastic is being collected there and it fits you know how it should and it's easy to take out and remove you know once it gets full and it actually does fill up relatively quick if you have the ams unit set up so i uh, just wanted to kind of take you all through how i thought about designing it and hopefully this will be helpful to you so i'll jump into fusion and we'll get started all right, so this is the design here of the tank and CAD, and I just want to go through some of my thought process behind how I made this. Hope this will help you guys if you're trying to make something, you know, this, this two pieces like this that you have to print separately, and hopefully I can explain kind of why I did the things I did, and that'll make sense, maybe help you out. So I'm just going to go back to kind of where I started uh, with this. So around here... This was one section. You could tell that there's two different pieces and they're, you know, joined together in the middle. So this was just a, a section that I knew would be in the right position based on the rest of the riser. So I started with this kind of as my base piece and I ended up cutting out a decent amount of it. And the reason I left this amount was I felt like with the clip that I already had in place for the rest of the riser, that was about the maximum I could cut out. So then I knew, okay, I'll have this amount of space. And then if you double that, uh, you'll have enough to kind of catch all the plastic and and have a big enough space to hold enough plastic to make it worthwhile so that's really how i got to this size was just because i didn't want to have to modify the actual clip that i already have and then kind of going from there i cut out this piece here so that was just a sketch there to cut out i think it's two or three millimeters there and thinking behind that was i wanted everything to sit flush so i knew that i could print um the face plate you know in a different direction for the for the tank and so this was a little offset so that it would sit you know flush with the rest of the design so that's why i did that initially and that's just me thinking through things and i knew that i could print this um like this essentially and, and it would work out okay so i wouldn't have to worry about you know if i had to print it you know, this way, for instance, um, I could do that, but it would just be a little bit different texture on the front. So I thought that printing it upright, you know, if the print bed is, is like down here, printing it upright would still work okay uh, with even with this cutout. So that was the next thing. So if you're looking at it, this is kind of the way that you'd be looking at it. This would be the table. And then the next thing I did was uh, made this little notch like thing and go through that so i initially made it this size and the thought behind this was i needed some way to essentially make all the pe the two pieces join together because they would be sitting you know flat on the ground and, and i had this piece that i wanted to essentially put in you know for the tank part but i needed a way to join this piece with the other mirrored piece and i thought about it thought of some different ways to do that just based on how i was printing this it was going to be hard to do a peg or, or some kind of joining feature and i ended up coming up with that uh, long kind of middle guide rail thing that you'll see in a minute and i thought that ended up working pretty well because it gives it a place for the tank to kind of slide back and forth on and kind of keeps everything centered and it serves as kind of a dual purpose of joining these two pieces together once I mirror that so I thought that turned out to be a pretty good solution I, I tried some other things but ended up liking that the most and you can see here this was uh, just the chamfers that I added so this is really all that I made for this piece and I'm going to move it over to the actual position that it'll be in I don't have all the other riser stuff showing but it, this is a riser design uh so that's why it, it moves places and then you can see here this is when I started to design the actual tank part so I just basically made a, a, a face plate using that amount that I cut out last time. Now I'm going to just extrude out the width of the tank that I needed. And then I'm going to add another piece here in a second to combine those two pieces together. And also added a chamfer here just because I knew I would print this uh, upright like that. 
And I wanted to, you know, be able to, to do this without having to have a bunch of supports under it. So if you use a 45 degree chamfer, you don't have to use uh, supports, which is a, a big plus, especially when a part's this big, you don't have to use that many supports. And so here is when I was starting to make that uh, channel for that ridge here that I add here in a second. So that was just me cutting that out before I did the shell feature. So I shelled everything out, made it all equal thickness there. And then here is where I combine the pieces. So before you can see that they were separate. And part of the reason why I did this was I just wanted to make sure everything fit correctly. Sometimes when you shell things in a different order, it'll it'll kind of mess things up a little bit. So this ended up working out a little bit better. And, and for instance, you know, if, if I would have combined these two pieces first and then shelled it, then the shell would have come to here. But I wanted this thick piece here because I, I'm going to use um, another clip in here to combine the parts. So I wanted to have, you know, this be as thick as, you know, this piece over here because I'm, I'm going to add a cutout here uh, to join the pieces. So then, you know, step through some more. Now I'm just basically modifying this piece to, to be the same size as the other wall pieces. And then just adding some chamfers. And then here is that cutout. And, oh, yeah, so here what I ended up doing instead of having to redraw all that cut out was I basically just made a negative and I, I mentioned this in another video that I did so I essentially just extruded out this profile so I filled up that hole and now you'll see that I'll basically move that over here and then just cut that out so you can see that I just essentially made you know a negative of that and then cut it out here so I didn't have to spend the time to recreate that design which took a little bit of time to get right and I didn't want to redo that so it's just kind of a shortcut and then I did some other stuff here so this was just making a little hole so that I could grab it with my fingers uh, fairly straightforward I, I added a chamfer in here as well yeah, so there's the, the chamfer. It's kind of hard to see from that angle, but you can see there I chamfered that off so that it would be a nice kind of a way to grab it, you know, on the inside and pull. So that was a, a feature that I thought turned out pretty well. And then, oh yeah, this is kind of one of the last things I did was I added um, a slot down here and that was just to give another place to kind of grab everything together. So basically what I'm doing is making a place where I can join the pieces. So you can see here, there's a little opening there and, I, and there's another slot that uh, slot piece that kind of slides in and uh, kind of joins everything together as well. And this is just adding some tolerance for it and you can see the slot piece there. And this doesn't even have any really... Uh, latching mechanism it's just really friction fit but it turned out pretty well and i thought just from a simplicity standpoint it, it worked fine and uh this was just adding another little chamfer on the front and then this is going to be mirroring the whole body so here is where we finally got kind of to the last part of it Let's see here yeah so i added a, a chamfer to this inside piece to to make it fit a little bit easier and then all these were just kind of little adjustments adding a little bit of tolerance here uh, to make sure that this would fit okay it wouldn't get too tight and then uh, let's see i think that's about all there were some small modifications in here that i did but really nothing too substantial so i mean you know cut this back a little bit and then made some more edits to this so that it would fit around and then i extruded out that piece uh, so that it can join together and you'll see here uh oh yeah and then i added that to make sure it was this was laying flat on the ground so if i just did the piece straight across uh, it wouldn't you know work right and i knew i could print this upside down like with this on the print bed and then i could just have this little cubby that would fit and and kind of join these pieces together like i mentioned earlier so that's something that i I try to do a good job of is i try to think about you know how am i going to print this constantly when i'm designing stuff like this because that really helps you out in the end you know if you if you don't think about that you can get into trouble where it's pretty difficult to make the design that you're you're thinking about with 3d printing and uh it just takes a lot of time and effort you know to to get good at that and you know, you learn different ways of uh, designing things where it'll work with a 3D printer versus, you know, I, I wouldn't be good at designing for injection molding at this point um, because I just don't have enough experience with it. So that's how it turned out. And 
you know, I didn't add any slides, but essentially, um, if you could imagine this would be locked in place and they would slide in and out like I showed earlier. And then this just kind of slots together. And there's a little clip here that comes across and, and joins the, these two pieces. So it's pretty solid and it doesn't really have to be super solid, you know, because it's just holding little pieces of plastic. So that is all I had. I'll have these files available uh, on Make a World and in the school community if you're interested. And the DLAC, if you want to use the enclosure, it should be back in stock relatively soon. We've been sold out for a little bit. We have a pretty big order coming in. So uh, stay tuned for that if it's not in stock and um thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed it